What's up, guys? Skippy After Countess here, and welcome back to another Cartridge of the Week episode. This week, uh, featuring around that for quite some time, uh, I was actually very obsessed with the 22 Hornet, or as it's known in Europe, the 56 by 35 millimeter though not to be confused with the 56 by 35 Veerling, if I'm pronouncing that right, which is uh, also a thing. So now, before we get into the history, usage, and all that stuff, we will first do what we always do and take a look at the head stamp, which on the top we can see REM-UMC, which stands for the manufacturer, Remington, and then UMC is Union Metallic Cartridge Company. Those were actually two separate companies that had merged in 1912, with UMC being the ones to actually supply the ammunition, and Remington being the ones to make the firearms. And then on the bottom we see 22 Hornet for the caliber 22 Hornet. So now as mentioned, the 22 Hornet was a cartridge that I myself was pretty obsessed with, mainly when I was in middle school if I remember right, and the main reason was because uh, I thought it was cool to take a 22 caliber bullet and make it uh, much more powerful than the standard 22 LR. Which is kind of funny because on the same token, I wasn't that much of a fan of 5.56 at the time. Uh, anyways, I would certainly not be the only one to have a fascination with the round as this caliber would explode in popularity practically as soon as it was introduced. Now, the caliber came about in 1930. However, it has its roots tracing back to 1885 with the 22 Winchester Centerfire cartridge, or WCF for short. This cartridge, though a black powder only round, was of the same mindset as the Hornet, a small bore, high velocity projectile with minimum recoil and perfectly suited for varmint hunting. Uh, in fact, looking at the 22 WCF, one notices just how similar it looks to the Hornet, and that's because the WCF would be the basis for the Hornet. Many would play around with the wildcatting of the cartridge, and in 1920, Winchester themselves would also begin experimentation. By 1930, they'd arrive at the 22 Hornet. Using smoke's propellant, they would increase the velocity by almost two times than what it previously was with the 22 WCF. And of course, not to forget, smokeless powder fouls up a whole lot less than black powder. Definitely an underappreciated advantage. Now, first, Winchester would begin making the ammunition with no commercially ready guns available. Should you have wanted a gun in this caliber, to which many did, you would have to go about getting a custom rechamber, which was typically done with either the Springfield model of 1922s or the Martini Cadets. In late 1932, however, the first commercially produced gun, the Savage Model 20, 3-D would arrive on the scene, and soon after, in early 1933, Winchester would offer a 22 Hornet chambering of their Model 1954 rifle. From here, the cartridge really took off, with plenty more guns in the chambering to come, and in 1936, Winchester would actually completely cease production of the 22 Winchester centerfire cartridge. Now, the 22 Hornet wouldn't be popular just here in the U.S., with Europe also taking a major fancy to the cartridge under, as mentioned, the 56 by 35 millimeter name. And it also wouldn't stick solely to the civilian market, with military seeing the great potential it had in survival rifles, with the Stevens 22410 being one such issue in World War II. And it of course would not remain the only survival rifle in the caliber issued, with guns like the M4 and M6 survival rifles coming later throughout the years. In fact, this cartridge in particular came from a box of Air Force surplus, though uh, do note that most of the ammunition made throughout the years uh, tended to be soft point ammunition. Which there is a funny side note in that the Hayes Convention outlaws the usage of such ammo, you know, of that nature in warfare, so on the boxes, it actually explicitly states that the ammunition is to not be used against human targets. However, though, I imagine being in, you know, down in enemy territory, uh, that little label on the box uh, may or may not get ignored when faced with enemy combatants, and the only gun you have is your trusty 22 Hornet rifle. 22 Hornet would remain highly popular until newer high-velocity 22 caliber cartridges like the 222 and 223 Remington had begun to hit the scene in the 1950s and 60s. However, unlike a lot of the old-school cartridges we've gone over on this channel, the 22 Hornet can definitely still be considered quite a popular round even today, with plenty of guns finding themselves in the chambering, and the cartridge actually still sees new guns arrive on the scene, with the most recent being the Ruger Super Red Hawk now having a 22 Hornet option, which, cool enough, was released just this year in 2024. Uh, hell, as mentioned earlier, the 222 specifically would cause a decline in popularity of the 22 Hornet, but, to my knowledge at least, they aren't making any new guns in that chambering, uh, well, at least here in the U.S. anyways, uh, there are countries in Europe that outlaw what they deem uh, war cartridges, so guns that you may commonly see in 223 uh, are chambered for 222 Remington in those places. Now, 22 Hornet is still fairly popular as mentioned, and for good reason. It's a very light recoiling, fairly quiet cartridge that is super accurate and versatile with its use in small game hunting. I would honestly say a good middle ground between a 22 long rifle and a 223 Remington. Uh, of course, with such a popular round, there exists plenty of different loadings as well. On average, you're looking at around 
around a 35 to 55 grain bullet flying at around 2650 all the way to 3000 plus feet per second. Now it should be noted that older 22 Hornet ammo used a 223 diameter bullet. However, new production ammo tends to use a 224 diameter bullet instead. Which, uh, if you were not aware, 223 Remington uh, also uses a 224 diameter bullet, uh, much like how 222 Remington also uses a 224 diameter bullet. Uh, yeah, uh, cartridge names are pretty interesting when you look at them. Now, it should be noted that the 22 Hornet, to no surprise, uh, also has quite a few Wildcats made from it. One popular cartridge actually being the 22 K Hornet, which, interestingly enough, takes the casing of the original Hornet and gives it more of a pronounced neck, giving it much more case volume to allow for a little more powder. But anyways, I think that is going to do it for this week's Cartridge of the Week episode featuring the 22 Hornet. I uh, hope you all enjoyed the video as much as I personally enjoyed making it, and I will see you all next time.